Um, so one thing that the DEL panel has to uh, figure out is wh whether the person applying for a grant can do the job or not. And so one way of determining that if, for an academic, say, is to look at their previous publication record and figuring out whether they look like they can do what they're planning to do. Um, but for somebody from a community who doesn't have an academic position, there's probably not much chance or reason to publish in academic journals. So it can be quite difficult for people to prove it that way. One way of setting yourself up for a Documenting Endangered Languages grant is to get a grant. And I know that sounds kind of catch-22-ish, uh, that you have to have a grant to get a grant, but what I'm talking about are smaller grants uh, that are outside the uh, National Science Foundation rubric that are somewhat easier to get in many cases and that can show that you know how to do a grant, that you know how to do a budget, and that you know how to get things done on a particular grant. So there are several possibilities for that. Uh, my own organization, the Endangered Language Fund, has two grant programs. Uh, the first is the Lewis and Clark uh, um, Native Voices Endowment, uh, which was established uh, for the bicentennial of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And so those tribes uh, that participated in the bicentennial uh, have now made it possible for their tribal members to be eligible for those grants. Um, those are still fairly small grants, up to $10,000 a year um, for three years, uh, some of them less. Um, but they're fairly easy to apply for, so we only expect a couple of pages uh, and a budget. And um, it is limited to tribal members of those um, uh, eligible tribes. But getting that money and being able to do a project with it and so forth is a really good indication that you know what you're going to do in the current proposal. Um, again, those are quite limited. Um, our other grant program, the Language Legacies grants, are available to everybody from any walk of life uh, anywhere on earth. And so that's much more available. Unfortunately, the grants are even smaller. They're limited to $4,000 for one year, and many of them come to much less than that. Still, they do show uh, the kind of organizational skills that you need for something like a DEL grant. Um, and indeed, many of our grantees have gone on to bigger grants uh, later on. Um, so it is something that can play a role. It's not a requirement. Uh, I don't at all want to indicate that you have to have one of these grants before you should consider a DEL grant, but it is something that can help out. Uh, I've talked about my own uh, organization, but there are some others. The Foundation for Endangered Languages, based in Britain, um, often has grant programs. Sometimes they have money, sometimes they don't. Uh, but you can look for money from them. They have a very similar grant program. Um, uh, there are uh, some projects available from a couple of programs at the American Philosophical Society. They have the Phillips Fund grants, which work for Native American languages north of the Rio Grande. Uh, and they have a Lewis and Clark uh, Fund as well, which is not limited to linguistics, but includes linguistics. Um, and uh, despite its name, is not really limited to the Lewis and Clark territory the way our Lewis and Clark uh, grants are. Um, so those are some um, nationwide uh, possibilities. Uh, there are smaller foundations that are often geographically limited, uh, the Lannan Foundation, the Kerr Foundation in Oklahoma, the Grotto Foundation in Minnesota, uh, and so forth, uh, that uh, we'll have some funds available uh, on occasion, uh, but they will often be geographically limited. Uh, on the one hand, this is bad if you're not in their geographical area, but on the other hand, it does limit the number of places you can look to. Uh, in particular, it's helpful if you talk to a program officer at this foundation before you even consider applying because all their requirements are extremely different and not well spelled out on their websites uh, just because uh, 
uh, there are too many things that you might want to consider, so they can't possibly put it all on the website. So it's very much worthwhile talking to a program officer at the foundations if you want to consider getting one of those uh, grants. For tribal members, uh, there's also the possibility of getting money from the Administration for Native Americans, uh, or ANA, and those grants are currently largely focused on immersion uh, programs, and so it's perhaps not quite possible for every tribal organization to go for them, uh, but still, those are larger grants. They're, again, federal grants, uh, but just not National Science Foundation grants. And uh, so they are uh, also something that would be very convincing to uh, the DEL uh, committee about uh, the ability to deal with uh, previous funding. So anyway, just to uh, reemphasize uh, that this is not at all a requirement. You are not required to have this funding before you apply to NSF. Uh, it's just something that can be very helpful if you don't have any other evidence of a track record um, in this area. So uh, um, these grants are also themselves very competitive. Um, the Language Legacies grants of the Endangered Language Fund that I mentioned, in fact, has a worse success rate than DEL does. Um, uh, so it's still difficult to get that money as well, as small as it is. Uh, but uh, at least the grant application process is much easier, just a couple of pages instead of 15. So. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, just consider doing that if you're wanting to apply for a DEL grant.